Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Good to see you all this morning. Welcome to those of you who are joining us online. We're happy that you can be part of worship with us. Go ahead and take a moment to like and subscribe to the page while those here sign the pads in their row. Today's service will follow the revised common lectionary readings for the third Sunday of Easter of year B. Our music today is covered by one license, license A-731558. Any uh, updates or changes to the prayers this morning? Holly? Okay, so Holly's friend Joan. Others? Okay. Oh no, yes, of course. Well, a couple of thank yous. First, thanks again for remembering to support the food pantry. Uh, in April, they're asking us to bring in mac and cheese. So if you've already brought that, thank you. If you haven't, just add it to your next shopping list and drop it in the barrel. Thank you to those of you who came to Spirit Night last Thursday. We had a good turnout, I think. Yes, there you are. Excellent. Great turnout. Thank you all. Very good. $185 from one spirit night. Yeah. Very good. Uh, and two things on the calendar, just want to draw your attention to. Sunday, May 12th is Mother's Day. So we will be having Mother's Day breakfast before service, thanks to the guys of Spam. So come at 9 that day for breakfast. And then a couple weeks after that, on Saturday the 25th, from 12 to 2, is our next bike rodeo. If you have bikes that you would like to donate, please see me and let me know about them. We have quite the collection already, but we can always add more to it. We will be collecting bikes through the end of April so that they can be uh, assessed in May to make sure they're ready to go for the bike radio. With that and the ringing of the bell, let's send ourselves to worship.
Please rise. We begin in the way in which we live and in which we're baptized. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life, that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from Acts. Peter addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of you, of you all. 
And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he has foretold through all the prophets that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. Let us read together from Psalm 4. Answer me when I call you, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I was in distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you love illusions and seek after lies? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. The Lord will hear me when I call. Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart in the silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, who will show us any good? Let the light of your face shine upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart, more than when grain and wine abound. In peace I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me rest secure. The second reading is from 1 John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called the children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. Well, they were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. But he said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. 
Amen. Well, as many of you know, I'm a big fan of Lego. If you go in my office, you'll see I've got a few minifigs on my desk. I've got the model that I made of St. Paul up on the file cabinet. It's just a fun way that I like to be creative. Well, as a Lego fan, I often hear about new sets that are coming out. Two weeks ago, I heard about one that just sounded completely ridiculous. I had no intention of buying it. It was a minion from Despicable Me, which is fine, right? I like the minions. But it was eight feet tall and had over 102,000 pieces, <laughs> most of which were yellow. It's like one of those massive statues that you would see at Legoland. But here it was as a product that you could buy. The video on the Lego website showed this guy pushing a box bigger than he was through his front door. The product page said that it would take you over a year to put it together. Some of the pictures showed people with this massive minion statue in their living room. Now, the day that I looked, there was no price listed. But at the typical cost of 10 cents a piece, that would still be over $10,000, right? I don't think so. The website then said that more big news was coming the next day. They even had a little countdown timer for it. So out of curiosity, I went back the next day thinking it was gonna be the price reveal. But the website said this, gotcha. We're not planning to release a giant minion anytime soon. We were just having a little, haha, April Fool's Day fun. I'll admit it, they got me. I thought it was real. Even though I didn't want to buy it, I thought they were telling the truth. Everything on their website made it look like this giant eight foot tall minion was legit. Now, of course, hearing an April Fool's Day joke like this is just silly and harmless. But sometimes people think something's true when it's not, and it's more serious. I mean, one of the phrases in our pop culture lexicon now is fake news, right? Sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between what's true and what's not especially when you don't have people saying the next day, ha ha, April Fools. So then how do you tell if something is fake or legit? How can you decide if you should trust something or not? And to be more specific, what about the resurrection? Well, of course, on the one hand, we celebrate resurrection. We're in the season of Easter. We are Easter people who live on this side of the empty tomb. But on the other hand, none of us were there when it happened. Yes, there have been people who have tried to, quote, prove the resurrection, but there were no news reporters that first Easter morning. We don't have any camera footage of the stone being rolled back and Jesus walking out. We don't have any unbiased account. And so I think there's part of us that maybe wonders if it's true. Maybe it's too ridiculous to be true. Maybe it's too good to be true. Maybe it just doesn't make sense. Is it all a hoax, like a big old April Fool's Day joke? Well, today's gospel reading actually answers that very question by giving us five very good pieces of evidence for the resurrection. So let's look at each one here. To set the scene, just prior to this story was the story of the two disciples who encountered the risen Christ on the road to Emmaus. So they have then returned and told the other disciples what happened. Those disciples then told the two travelers 
that the risen Christ appeared to Simon too. So in other words, the first piece of evidence for the resurrection is the multiple stories of it. Right? This is what the disciples are dealing with at the start of this reading. They have different accounts of it coming in. But at this point, it's kind of like hearing stories of Bigfoot. Some people claim to have seen him, but most people haven't. And those who haven't think that the stories are ridiculous. It's the same thing today. Some people, including us sometimes, hear the stories of the resurrection and we don't completely buy it. They sound great, but maybe we're a little hesitant. We read the words on the page in the Bible, but it's like reading a, a product page online. Is this legit? We've learned that if it sounds too good to be true, then it probably is. We are skeptical people. We live in a skeptical society. So sometimes the words aren't always enough. So like those first disciples, we need more. So after they hear these multiple reports, or as the text says, while they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them. So first there were the stories, and second, the risen Christ stood right there in front of them. Now you would think that would be convincing enough, right? I mean, he's right here. How much more obvious can you get? But it's not. The text says that the disciples were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. Even after the risen Christ shows them his body and his wounds, they were disbelieving and still wondering. So even the first disciples the people who had literally followed Jesus around day after day didn't believe it at first. They heard the stories, they saw him right there in front of them, and they still had a mix of belief and doubt. Which means, if you find yourself in a mix of belief and doubt, it's okay you are in good company. You are allowed to wonder and doubt and be suspicious. It's a natural reaction to hearing something like this. Because as I mentioned on Easter Sunday, resurrection completely rewrites how the world works. So that means it might take a little bit for your mind to adjust. This isn't something that's going to make sense at first glance. And to make it even more challenging, today we don't have the risen Christ in front of us like they did. But in a way, we do have Christ in front of us because the church exists. We are the body of Christ in the world. We present him to others. And you would think that the very existence of the church would be evidence enough of the resurrection. But sometimes it's not. Sometimes people think the church is a business or a club, or an irrelevant group of brainwashed people. They think it's just a bunch of hypocrites, or scandals, or people passing judgments on others. But thinking that way is like the original disciples thinking the risen Christ was a ghost. They didn't understand what was right there in front of them. So more support is needed. 
The original disciples had the stories, they had the risen Christ in front of them, but they still weren't convinced. So the third thing that happened was that Jesus said, peace be with you. Now, most of the time when we think of peace, we think it means the absence of conflict. And so peace be with you then becomes just the churchy way of saying, I wish that you don't have any struggles in life. Or more commonly, have a nice day. But you have no control over whether you'll have a nice day or not. Some people might even say, I don't want to have a nice day. It's like telling the person getting on a plane, have a nice flight, and they said, well, that's really up to the captain, isn't it? The problem here is that we often confuse peace with security. Security means no trouble can get to me. Think about security cameras, security systems, security guards, homeland security, security software on your computer, and on and on and on, right? Security is there to protect you so nothing bad can reach you. But bad things still happen. Peace, though, is different. Peace means that even when you're experiencing trouble, the trouble isn't in control. Peace means that you can sleep at night even though you know the world is crazy. Peace means trusting that God is in charge because you know that you aren't. Thinking about it that way completely redefines what world peace means. Or, let me put it this way, it is not a coincidence that we say both peace be with you and the Lord be with you. That's because the Lord is our peace. When we shake hands and say, peace be with you, we're not just using churchy language to say, have a nice day. Instead, we are reminding others, and they are reminding us, that Jesus is with us in our struggles. That's what we need, my friends. That's what resurrection gives us. It's the promise of peace. Even in the face of death, Jesus is still with us. We remembered that yesterday when we had Marlowe's memorial service. That's the promise of resurrection for all of us that Jesus is with us even in times of trouble and death. So the first disciples had the stories of the risen Christ. They saw him there with them. They received his promise of peace. But there was still more to convince them of the truth of the resurrection. The fourth thing is that Jesus opened scriptures to them. He helped them see that resurrection was connected to everything they had already learned. It all fit together. Right? Resurrection was not this thing that came out of the blue. Instead, it was a part of how things were going to play out. Both Jesus' death and his resurrection were inevitable. And this is why we still read the Bible today. We see how stories from back then connect to our lives today. And that's exactly what Jesus was doing for those disciples. 
he was connecting the stories that they knew to their own lived experience. They were continuing the biblical story, just as we do. Plus, in our lives, death and resurrection are inevitable too. We know that death will happen, but because of Jesus, resurrection will happen too. And finally, the last support in this text for resurrection is that Jesus sent the disciples out to tell others about it. You are witnesses of these things, Jesus said. Jesus wouldn't send them or us out to tell a lie. And think of this. Here we have a whole bunch of scared, overwhelmed, doubting people who weren't even convinced of the resurrection for themselves. And Jesus trusts them to share the good news with others? Really? That's like Jesus trusting the church today. Has he seen us? Doesn't he know how broken and unsure of ourselves we are? Doesn't he know how we mess up? Yes, of course he knows. But he still trusts us. Why? Because the truth of the resurrection is not based upon our ability or confidence or even faith. It's based upon him. So how do we know that Resurrection's true and not some big April Fool's joke? Well, because of five very good reasons. We have the stories. The church exists. We've been given his peace. It ties into scripture. And we've been sent out to tell others about it. I don't know about you, but that is way more convincing to me and way more important than a product page for a giant Lego minion. Whether you are living in the first century or the 21st century, resurrection is good news, it is true news, and it is news worth sharing. And that's no joke. In the name of the one whose resurrection is wonderfully true, Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. Now together, let us confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, 
the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate to the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. O God, our Holy One, you feed our deepest hungers. As we share the holy meal that is the body and blood of Jesus given for us, lead us to share all that we have and find in generosity abundant life. God of grace, Hear our prayer. O God, our creator, you bring forth all life on earth. Calm storms, bring water to parched places and protect the climate, that this planet would sustain life in all its variety. God of grace. Hear our prayer. O God, our savior, you offer wisdom and guidance beyond all human knowledge. Instruct lawmakers, judges, and elected officials to make decisions grounded in your justice and care for all people. God of grace. Hear our prayer. O God, our elder, you care for all your children. Encourage those who are in times of transition, facing the loss of old ways and routines and anticipating change. Guide those who journey in grief, hope, and uncertainty, especially Joan, Donna, and Pastor Bob, Susan, Anne, Mark Griffin, Kathy and Dale, Emily, Mark Lambert, Timothy, Barb, Mariana, Dick and Mard, Bill, Diane and Mike, Marcy, the family of Marville Sickler, Jordan, Jackie and Larry, Beverly, and the family of Gary Harriger. God of grace. Hear our prayer. O God, our center, you bring all people together in you. Help us to remember our identity and purpose in ministry. Move us to love our neighbors as ourselves and to share in beloved community. God of grace. Hear our prayer. O oh God, our resting place, your son Jesus promised that we are held in your love forever. We remember our beloved who have died as we remember and share their love, comfort those who mourn. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Please take a moment and share Christ's peace. Those of you with us online, please leave a word of peace in the comments.
Please be with you. Peace. Peace, Claire. Peace. With you. Peace with you. Peace. Peace be with you. Peace, Jerry. Well, as we prepare to give our offering, a word to those of you with us online today. Please remember to mail your offering to the church office, or you can give online. Text keyword online giving, all is one word, to 73256. It is because of the generosity of all of us that we continue in our mission of loving God, loving neighbor. Vineyards be fruitful, Lord, and fields to the brim our cup of blessing. Gather the harvest from the seeds that were sown, that we may be fed with the bread of life. Gather the hopes and the dreams of all, unite them with the prayers we offer now. Grace our table with your presence and give us a foretaste of the feast to come. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right. Our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death 
and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Oh. Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love, you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal those who were sick and suffering, who preached good news to those who were poor, and who, on the cross, opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks, and gave it to them all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Now, remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And now, gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. The body of Christ, given for you. The blood of Christ, shed for you. Body of Christ, given for you. The body of Christ, given for you. The body of 
Christ given for you? The blood of Christ. The body of Christ given for you. 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 God loves you more than you could imagine. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. As nothing else will do, I love to tell. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. The 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 body of Christ given for you. Please rise. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. The hearts and voices raise Tell everyone what God has done Let all who seek the Lord rejoice And bear Christ's holy name Send us with your promises, O God And lead us forth in joy With its shouts of thanksgiving, Amen Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another, for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Please be seated for the postlude. Go in peace and log out in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>